Greetings to you from Moss Bluff United Methodist Church today. Uh, as we are unable uh, this morning to gather together and worship in uh, these days, but I'm glad that you are uh, with us in this way uh, via video this morning as we come to hear today's message. Injustice, hurt, hatred, they abound all around us. And we ask ourselves as followers of Jesus, is there anything that we can do about it? Is there any hope? You know the feeling, you turn on the news, you look at your uh, social media feed, and you can just get easily depressed. We hear about disease and hunger and violence, and it just seems to rule the day at times. Believe it or not, people long ago felt the same way. The prophets, Jesus, encountered many world problems. Sadly, hurt, injustice, and brokenness in the world is nothing new. But what can we do about it? Is there anything we can do about it? Of course, yes, there is. And the scripture can lead us in the right direction. And we're going to start with hearing from Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. Let us hear God's holy word this day. With what should I approach the Lord and bow down before God on high? Should I come before him with entirely burned offerings, with year-old calves? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with many torrents of oil, should I give my oldest child for my crime, the fruit of my body for the sin of my spirit? He has told you, human one, what is good and what the Lord requires from you, to do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you in these unusual times in our world and even in our church. But we are thankful for your holy presence through all of this. We ask that in this time that uh, our meditations, our thoughts, our prayers, and the words that I speak are right and good to you. For you, O oh God, you sent us a Savior, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. So what can you do to make a difference in the world around us? Well, Micah lays it out quite clearly. We are to do justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Now that's a great place to start, right? So what does this look like? This is our call to serve others in the world. And serving others is an essential practice of the Christian life. Serving others is as important as going to church, prayer, and reading scripture. You see, we look around the world and we see all these problems. We see children who are hungry. We see people who are treated unfairly. And we say, I sure wish that God would do something about that. And we can pray about it, and we can talk about it, but what it really comes down to is doing something about it. And who can teach us the best way to help others? Well, of course, Jesus can. At the very essence of Jesus' teachings, it was about love. In fact, Jesus said the first and the most important commandment was to love God fully with heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. That means if we want to live out this commandment to show our love to God, we must show love to our neighbors. At time in our world, at times God has been heartbroken with what he sees. Adam Hamilton in The Walk reminds us of what it says in Genesis 6.6. 6. The Lord regretted making human beings on the earth, and he was heartbroken. God has seen the evil 
and violence among human beings and was heartbroken. Where are those places today where God sees and his heart is broken? Those are the very places that God needs us to take action. That's right, it is up to us. Hamilton writes in his book, God's primary mode of working in the world is through people. This means that God is depending on you and me. No pressure, right? But really, it is possible. You and I can make a difference in this world with the hurt, the violent injustice, and we don't have to be a superhero to do it. So how do we change the world through serving others? We must turn our eyes towards the one who has our eyes on us, Jesus. Yes, we must serve like Jesus. And how do we do that? Well, Jesus shows us. First, in order to serve like Jesus, we must allow our lives to be interrupted. Jesus' healings and works weren't placed on a calendar each day. Jesus didn't wake up and check his phone in the morning on his calendar and say, okay, heal blind man at one o'clock. No. Instead, Jesus noticed the needs of people as he traveled from one place to the next. The problem we have with allowing our lives to be interrupted is that we believe we're just always too busy. Now, I get that thinking. I had this meeting to go to. There's this person I need to see. And, oh, yeah, I have to have a sermon written by Sunday morning. I get it. Yet, yet, the needs of others in this world are always there. And if we continue just to pass them by because we're too busy, then the world's never going to change. We have to allow ourselves to be open to those nudges from the Holy Spirit. It takes an intentional effort, but it can happen. God lays opportunities in front of us all the time. We can't pray for the world to be better if we don't seize the opportunities that God gives us to make it better. We must allow our lives to be interrupted. Next, if we want to serve like Jesus, we must be willing to take a risk. Now, taking a risk is not necessarily about taking a physical rest, risk, like traveling into a war zone or entering into a dangerous situation. Some are willing to do such things, but it's not necessary. Risk, when it comes to serving, as I see it, means leaving your comfort zone. That may mean crossing the street to help your neighbor, going into a neighborhood that looks different than your own, or traveling to another country. It may just be signing up to help with the mission project at the church. To serve others takes some type of risk. When you take the risk to help someone, you may get rejected, they may be mean to you, there are all sorts of possible outcomes, yet more than likely the, income, the outcome will be that you have changed someone's life. That change will never happen unless you're willing to take the first step. To serve like Jesus means that you need a willingness to let at times your life be interrupted, to take a risk, but ultimately, to serve Jesus, to serve like Jesus, you must be willing to say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. That's what we need to do. So often we want something to change. But it doesn't mean that we want to be the one who makes the changes. Many of us underestimate what we can do. The truth is, every one of us can make more of a difference than we realize. The following tells us just that. In 1972, NASA launched the exploratory space probe Pioneer 10. 
According to Leon Jaroff from Time Magazine, the satellite's primary mission was to reach Jupiter, photograph the planet and its moons, and to beam data to Earth about Jupiter's magnetic field, radiation belts, and atmosphere. Scientists regarded this as a bold plan, for at that time, no Earth satellite had ever gone beyond Mars, and they feared the asteroid belt would destroy the satellite before it could reach its target. But Pioneer 10 accomplished its mission and much, much more. Swinging past the giant planet in November of 73, Jupiter's immense gravity hurled Pioneer 10 at a higher rate of speed towards the edge of the solar system. At 1 billion miles from the sun, Pioneer 10 passed Saturn. At 2 billion miles, it hurtled past Uranus, Neptune at nearly 3 billion miles, Pluto at almost 4 billion miles. By 1997, 25 years after its launch, Pioneer 10 was more than 6 billion miles from the sun. And despite its immense distance, Pioneer 10 continued to beam back radio signals to scientists on Earth. Perhaps most remarkable, writes Jeroff, those signals emanate from an 8-watt transmitter which radiates about as much power as a bedroom nightlight and takes more than nine hours to reach Earth. The little satellite that could was not qualified to do what it did. Engineers designed Pioneer 10 with a useful life of three years, but it kept going and going. By simple longevity, its tiny 8-watt transmitter radio accomplished more than anyone thought possible. What could you do if you feel like you only have an 8-watt capability? What could you do with that? I think you could do a lot, a whole lot in this world. In the first place you can start with making a difference to serving others is this. I'm challenging you, beginning this week, to commit five acts of kindness each week. Return your neighbor's empty trash can back to their house. Be courteous to someone in traffic. Allow someone to go ahead of you in line. Offer food to a person in need on the street corner. There are so many ways that you can make a difference. Simple ways. So along with committing to worshiping weekly in whatever format that may be, praying five times a day, reading at least five verses of scripture each day, you are now being asked to do five acts of kindness each week. Just imagine if there's about 120 of us or so who did five acts of kindness each week, that would be 600 acts of kindness right here in our own community. Do you think that that would have an impact? Most certainly. So when you wake up tomorrow and you turn on the news, you look at Facebook, you see all that's wrong, you just feel overwhelmed like nothing can happen, nothing can change, Instead of feeling that way and bemoaning the ugly, begin your day by saying, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen and amen.